Okay, can I just ask my question? Yes, you can. I'm, I'm just curious if you could remember back to when your, your what, your, your people, your species went through this change that we're going through, how you lived your life at the same time. I'm finding a lot of pain involved in letting go of old concepts. The only reason you would have pain in letting go of old concepts is you don't believe that you need to let them go. You believe they're serving you still. Remember, you hold on to nothing, nothing that you don't actually believe is somehow serving you. No matter how painful they may be to hold on to, what you're actually saying is the alternative is worse. How do I get to the bottom of how it's serving me? Very good question. And here's how you can do it, at least one way. The idea is to understand what we have called the motivational mechanism. Again, please understand, this is automatic for everyone. There is absolutely nothing you really need to do to make this work. It's already working. You just have to allow yourself to understand how it works so that you can use it in a way that you prefer to instead of using the mechanism in a way that you don't prefer. You follow me so far? Yes. All right. The motivational mechanism is simply this. And I mean there are no exceptions to this. Not even you. You follow me? Yes. All right. You will always, immediately, automatically, move in the direction of what you believe to be in your best interest, you will always immediately and automatically move away from what you believe is not in your best interest. Knowing that, that should tell you something. If you are holding on to something that you know, intellectually, is not in your best interests, and you understand the motivational mechanism I just described, the only way that that could stick around is if you have defined it in the motivational mechanism as actually being in your best interest more than the alternative. Or vice versa, you have defined the thing that you say you prefer as actually somehow being more scary, more fearful than the thing you don't prefer. And so you're so afraid of the thing you do prefer for some reason, based on some belief you're holding on to, that you're willing to put up with the pain and struggle of the thing you don't prefer just because it's more familiar, just because it feels safer, because you're so much more scared of the thing you don't know about. And Does I've, this make some sense? Oh, yeah, I've heard this many right. times from you. But, how but do it's I, not sinking in. I, I, I can't figure it out. How do I move forward? I want to move forward so bad. Well, you have to find out what it is you're holding on to. Have you heard us give the example of the idea of how people on your planet are raised with different definitions of money. Yes. Can you apply that idea to yourself at all about the contradictory beliefs that you are raised with that create conflict within you until such time as you actually consciously identify those beliefs? Because only by consciously identifying them can you let them go. If you don't know what they are, you have nothing to work with. I know what my beliefs are. I guess I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm swimming upstream. Like I my, don't care what you feel like. <laughs> like my ego I is understand like... what you feel like. But again, remember, the feeling only comes because you believe something to be true. You can't have a feeling without believing something to be true first. So if you have a feeling you're swimming upstream, you have got to be defining something in your life in that way. You yourself said it a moment ago, easier said than done. These are just belief systems. They're not empirical truths. There is absolutely nothing about the phrase, easier said than done, that is an absolute law of creation. It's you that is giving it solidity by believing in that idea. Mm. You're the one giving it form. You're the one giving it shape for some reason. Find out what the reason is why you are buying into those kinds of limiting ideas that produce struggle, strife, pain. Remember, pain is resistance to the natural self. So what is it about being your true natural self? What is it about the thing you prefer to be that is so much scarier than what you're already holding on to that you don't prefer? What would be the worst, most terrifying thing you can imagine would happen if you actually let go of all of these fears and negative definitions and actually allowed yourself to be who you preferred to be. What would be the scariest thing that you imagine might happen if you did that? Yeah, 
I wouldn't know who I am anymore. I, cause, no, all right. Uh, very good. Yeah. Now, why would you assume that to be true? Because I define myself from my experiences and all the people around me. And if I move on to a whole different belief system, yes. I'll kind of be out there by myself. Well, may I ask you a question? Yes, please. Haven't you ever moved from one belief system to another ever in your life? Yes. <laughs> well, was that a problem for you? Well, it was, but when I got there, I was okay. So what makes you think it's not going to be okay again? How many examples of doing that do you need before you get the point that it's always okay? Okay. How many times do you have to give yourself that symbol, that reflection, before you know it will actually always be okay? How many times? It's up to you. I'm not pushing you. How many times have you already done it? innumerable and it's been very painful so maybe I'm getting from you if I just kind of let go with it the pain will kind of go away too it will not kind of go away it, will it won't go. exist in the reality of the person that you actually prefer to be because by definition that person doesn't experience pain and uh -huh. struggle okay. and resistance okay. you see you have to watch your definitions you have a definition that says if I become who I prefer to be there's something about that that's going to be painful. But if you actually listen to what you just said, you would realize that that's nonsensical. How could becoming who you prefer to be contain a definition of being something that is not what you prefer? Yes. You understand? Yes. Your definitions are muddled. That's where you're having the difficulty. You're not listening to the definitions you're actually using to define who it is you prefer. You're creating your own contradictory definitions about who that person is. If that really is the you you prefer to be, it cannot, cannot, by definition, contain the elements of negativity that you're describing. Otherwise, it can't be that you. It wouldn't be that you. It would make no sense. So what you're defining is someone that isn't who you prefer to be. But when you define clearly who it is you do prefer to be, and you allow yourself to be that person, it will not contain anything that is irrelevant for that particular person. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. But, but, I, guess, but I guess I'm living in a duality. You know, when I, when you're I living in a trinity, but we won't go into that now. <laughs> when I meditate and I'm all into doing the things that give me the most joy, everything is yes. wonderful, and then I have to come back. To real life. Oh, so yeah. you're defining real life as negative. And I, I can't, I, I don't want to live in that other world emotionally Then anymore. don't. Okay, how? Again, when you say real life. Which means going to work and all that. So business. what? Does that just mean that you're not doing what you love to do? No, I, I, I like, I like it, but it's so different. It has a different feel to it, you know? Then you're not doing what you love to do. I mean, I'm really happy that I go to work. I'm like, I like my job, but I just feel do so Do you unhappy. do what you love to do or not? I know, yes I know you've had no. this conversation a lot. Um, okay, I used to really love it then. Okay. Is there something else you would rather be doing? I'd like to be retired, yeah, <laughs> and then pursue, pursue this kind of life all the time where I'm just happy. Well, why not do that? That's the hard part, I guess. Okay. Why are you saying that's hard? You're the one making it harder. Yeah, you're right. There is nothing empirically true that what it is you prefer to do has to be hard in the way that you mean it. Yes, of course, there will always be some challenge. Yes, of course, you might have to actually take some actions and do things. But if it's truly a labor of love, it won't feel like a labor. It will be a joy. Are you picking up on this? Very much so. And I just got, I, do you understand? When how? you say very much so, unless you actually exhibit the behavior that goes along with it, it's not very much so. <laughs> Remember, action and knowing are synonymous. So if you're not actually acting like it, you don't know it yet.